Hi guys, it's Amy here and today I bring you my December wrap up. Here we are, the last wrap up of 2015. In December I actually read 10 books. I really wanted to reach the goal of 100 books. I'd never read that many in a year before. I did set my goal to 50, so 100 was a lot for me. I've never read that much, so it was very, very exciting and I managed to reach it, so I was very happy with myself. So as I have 10 books to talk about in this video, let's get on with it. The first two books I read were actually part of a series, The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis, and the first one was The Magician's Nephew, and the second, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. I thought to start the month off I would go with something quick and easy, and one I had never read before. I actually do have the rest of the books in this series. I think there's seven of them all together and I do hope to finish them all in this year. These were really light, fun reads. I actually really enjoyed them. I thought they were really funny and just really enjoyable to read around Christmas time. They just got me in the mood for Christmas. The story of the Lion and the Witch and the Wardrobe from the film, so I knew what was going to happen in that one, but The Magician's Nephew was completely new to me and I really liked the story. I liked the characters and just the way it was written. I thought it was really brilliantly done and I'd highly recommend to anyone who has any interest in these kind of children's classics and things like that. I think they're really fun. So yes, I think I gave both of these around four stars each. The next book I read was another shortish one and it was The Timekeeper by Mitch Album. This is the first Mitch Album book that I've read and I'm currently reading Tuesdays with Maury, which I'm really enjoying. This is a non-fiction book. This, however, is fiction. This is the story of how time came to be. We follow the main character who is Father Time. We also have two other characters, a young girl who is wishing time away she wants time to go quicker and an older man who is wanting more time he wants to extend his life and he is just begging for more time so we follow the life of father time but we also see how he interacts with these two main characters and how he helps them kind of sort their lives out basically. I thought it was a really quick but effective read. I was really touched to come the end so I gave this one at five out of five stars. So the next book I read was Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire by JK Rowling. If you've been watching my last few videos you know that I've been rereading the series at the moment. One of my New Year's resolutions is to finish reading the series. I'm currently on the Order of the Phoenix so this was just an enjoyable reread over the Christmas time. I really liked it. I also got my boyfriend to watch the films with me because he hadn't watched them all and he, he didn't really know that if he was going to enjoy them and he did so we've just got the last one to watch now so that's just a really nice thing that happened over Christmas. I'm going to go into what this one is all about because I'm sure you've all read it or seen it or if you haven't you definitely need to go and start at the beginning. It's definitely one of the best series out there. It's so fantastic and it just gives me all the feels. So I don't know if I really even need to say it but I gave this one five out of five stars as well. The book I read was actually one of my favourites from the month and it was We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. I have no other words to describe this book other than it was phenomenal. I really really loved it. So basically this follows the story of two sisters and their uncle who all live in this stately kind of home together which is cordoned off from the rest of the town that they live in. You learn at the beginning of the book and it actually says on the back as well so it's not a spoiler that the older of the two sisters has been acquitted for the murder of their entire family everyone in their family has been killed apart from the two girls and their uncle. So although she's been acquitted for the murder, the whole town seems to treat them very nastily and don't really like to go near them. They kind of keep to themselves in their cordoned off area in their stately home. The protagonist of the story is the younger sister and you see everything through her eyes. She has a very childlike perspective on things. She does a lot of things in a very childlike manner and I thought that was so brilliantly done. There were parts of this book where I was just smiling because it was so clever. It was so beautifully written and I had to just put the book down and just smile because I thought wow you know Shirley Jackson this is this is good. I'm gonna leave it at that I'm not gonna spoil anything that happens in this book just know that I seriously love this and if you have any similar taste to me then I think you would probably love it as well. I don't need to say it I gave it five out of five stars it's gonna be in my top for the year. This book I finished in December was The Tenet of Woodfall Hall by Anne Bronte. We follow the main character Gilbert Markham and a new mysterious woman moves into the town where he lives. Gilbert takes a fancy to her and we read through his perspective. He's writing letters to a friend describing this woman and how she's very mysterious. The whole town is kind of gossiping about her, like where she come from and why she's so secret about her life and things like that. I really enjoyed that aspect of the book. I liked reading through Gilbert's perspective. We then go on to read through the lady's perspective, Mrs. Graham, and we kind of read her whole life story before she got to this point in the story where she is in the town where he's living. I did find that part of the book dragged a little bit for me. I did find it interesting but I wish that it kind of had been split up a bit more with Gilbert's part of the story because it just went on and on and on 
And at one point I even forgot that we'd read the beginning part of the story from Gilbert's perspective. I felt like I'd just been reading this woman's account of things for such a long time that I just forgot that there was someone else in the story as well. But eventually you do end up back with Gilbert and Mrs. Graham in the present day and see what happens with them. It's a really quaint read and I would definitely recommend to anyone who's read the other Bronte sisters novels and wants to see what this one's about as well. So yes, I gave this one a four out of five stars and I'm really glad I read it. I will be doing a kind of fuller discussion of all the Bronte sisters novels once I've got them all and planned it out. It probably will be in February by now because oh my goodness this month is just I've got so much planned for you guys it's exciting. So the next book I have to show you is The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. This is a dystopian type novel set in a future where most women are no longer fertile and the women who can bear children are kind of sold to families to become their kind of breeding machines. The only way I think I can describe this book is quietly horrifying because on the surface it doesn't seem particularly bad but really when you think about it like it could be real this could happen this is too close for comfort maybe. It was brilliantly executed and this is my second Margaret Atwood book so if you have any recommendations, I've read The Penelope Ad as well, if you have any recommendations for any more Margaret Atwood reads then do let me know down below. Three books left, so my next one I have here is No Matter the Wreckage, Poems by Sarah Kay. This is a poem collection, obviously I've been reading this over the last few months. I'm not a big reader of poetry, in fact the only poetry I've ever really read is stuff that I was assigned in school to study. Although I know very very little about poetry, I thought this one was really great and I would highly recommend to anyone who maybe is an Ubri as well and wants to just read something that's kind of just like spoken word and is very easy to read. I recommend this one. I gave it four out of five stars. The penultimate book that I read in December was The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer. This one has been doing the kind of rounds on YouTube but this is another that Jen and Lena and people like that always speak about and I picked it up on their recommendation. It's funny because until it arrived at my door I didn't realise that this is the lady who was in the Dresden Dolls band which I listened to a lot when I was younger. I had literally had no idea that this was the same person until I started reading it which was fantastic because then I felt like I had more of a connection to her and her story. She's also married to Neil Gaiman who's awesome. This is Amanda talking about her life and talking about how she came to be kind of at the creative place where she is now, all the different bands and things that she went through, all the creative input she had from people in her life. Amanda describes lots of ups and downs with her life. She describes very intimate relationships that she has with very close friends. One of her friends, Anthony, he says some very, very poignant things in this book. I think Amanda's relationship with her friend Anthony was one of my favourite aspects of this book. I thought it was brilliant. Anyway, I would recommend this to anyone who has a creative bone in their body. Amanda is an incredibly inspirational and creative person. Like, I just found her to be so likeable when reading this. I can't even understand half of the hate and stuff that she was describing in this book because she was just so just lovely. I just, yeah, I would love to meet her in real life. I think she'd be a really interesting person to speak to. Yes, I gave this one a four out of five stars. Okay, so we're on to the final book I read in December and that was Cold Comfort Farm by Stella Gibbons. This is a little penguin classic. This follows the story of a young, a well-to-do lady called Flora who, when she is 20, she is orphaned and then writes to lots of different family members and then ends up deciding to go and live on a farm called Coal Comfort Farm with some very distant kind of relatives of her. When Flora reaches this farm, she makes lots of decisions on how she is going to change it and all of the people living there. Slowly but surely, Flora makes all these alterations and speaks with all the people throughout the farm and gets them to change things about their lives. It's really quite an entertaining read. I think there's also like either a TV series or a film of this as well. Full of old characters, full of funny moments and I really enjoyed it. I gave it four out of five stars as well. We are, that was my December wrapper. Let me know down below if you've read any of those books and what you thought of them. Let me know what you've been reading as well. As always I will leave links to Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, everything I mentioned today are down below. I hope you're all having a fantastic day and I will see you soon. Bye!